story to tell. The Dutch aviation pioneer Anthony Fokker played an incredibly important role in the development of both military and civil aviation during the first three decades of power flight. His designs and the eponymous company he formed to build them became mainstays in German school effort during World War I, with such important types as the Fokker and Decker, DR-1 Chaplin, and D-7. The final fighter which Anthony Fokker's company put into production was the D-21. It wasn't the fastest or most powerful, nor the most heavily armed on the world stage at that time. But what it lacked in those terms, it more than met up for with its agility. It was the only relatively modern fighter which the Netherlands was able to field as they took on the German Luftwaffe during the Battle of Netherlands. The Fokker D-21 fighter was designed in 1935 by Dutch aircraft manufacturer Fokker in response to requirements laid out by the Royal Netherlands East Indies Army Air Force. The Fokker D-21 first flew on March 27, 1936. The system was originally intended to fill the ranks of the Netherlands East Indies Army Air Service. But the arrival of World War II eventually pressed it into service with Finland, Denmark, and Netherlands Air Force units against Germany. Operationally, the D-21 proved a reliable airframe with solid performance specifications, good maneuverability, and was relatively inexpensive to produce. At the time, it proved quite a revolutionary step forward for the Dutch with many of its current aircraft still resembling the biplanes of a forgotten era of military aviation. Two red planes were produced in Netherlands, with additional license production occurring in both Denmark and Finland. The later fighter was all one could expect, neat, tough, and highly maneuverable with good performance and heavy armament. It marked the transition between the fabric-covered biplane and the stressed skin monoplane. The wings were of a wooden construction, being composed of two box spears attached to ribs made of plywood. The aircraft was outfitted with a fixed part undercarriage with cantilever legs. Braking was provided by independently operated pedals using compressed air. There were many focal projects for developed T-21s with rechargeable landing gear and other engines, but the production aircraft was generally similar to the prototype. The cockpit of the T-21 was fully enclosed by a plexiglass hood featuring large sliding sections and was entirely jettisonable in an emergency situation to enable pilots to bail out. Pilots were protected against turnover injuries by means of a pylon built into the structure of the aircraft set behind the seat. Fuel was housed in a 77-gallon tank located aft of the engine, when mounted auxiliary fuel tanks could also be installed. Fitted with a Bristol Mercury at 9-cylinder aircraft radial piston engine provided 830 horsepower. The aircraft has a maximum speed of 460 km per hour. The cruise speed of 429 km per hour. The range was 930 km. The service ceiling of 11350 m. Time to altitude 6000 m in 7 minutes 30 seconds. The plane proved to be slightly underspeeded for a modern monowing fighter. Due to the fact that the plane was underpowered, it was not suitable for any high altitude interception draw. However, its affection aerodynamic profile 
low wing pressure and high engine torque were features that provided the D21 with excellent dogfighting capabilities, which it would prove when our matching the much faster BF109 during the many dogfight engagements in May 1940. The result was a positive dogfight score against its adversaries. The Finnish Air Force that had altered the D-21 as well, proved even more successful with this fighter. A handful of Finnish D-21 fighters claim almost 200 air victories over the Russian Air Force during both Finnish Russo wars. The main armament consisted of two pairs of 7.92mm M36F and Browning machine guns, two being housed within the wings and the other pair within the forward fuselage, requiring the latter to shoot through the propeller blades. Guns installed within the fuselage carried 5 red rounds each, while wing-mounted guns had 3 red rounds each. Upon its entry to service in 1938, the D-21 represented a significant leap forward for the Dutch Army Aviation Group, whose fighter force had until that time consisted of aging biplanes with open copies. The new Fokker quickly proved to be an extremely sturdy aircraft, being capable of attaining a speed of 700 km per hour in a dive. The Dutch D-21s saw less than a week of action following the German invasion of the West on May 10, 1940, with many of the country's 28 fighters being destroyed on the ground. However, those that survived the initial onslaught inflicted losses on the Luftwaffe. By then, however, the D-21 had found overlasting fame in Finland during the Winter War of 1939-1940. Proving itself a real thorn in the side of the Soviets, the fighter, operating in primitive conditions and against vastly superior numbers, finished D-21s racked up an incredible score against the Red Air Force. Several Finnish Air Force pilots became fighter ace with the Fokker D-21. The highest scoring airframe was FR-110, achieving 10 victories. This aircraft survived the war and is on display at the Central Finland Aviation Museum. Interestingly, both Denmark and Spain also licensed build the Fokker D-21. While Denmark produced just 10 examples, in addition to the three Fokker built examples, the Spanish factory reportedly that 50 D 21s on the production line to supply the Spanish Republican Air Force in their fight against Franco in the Spanish Civil War. However, their factory was unfortunately overrun by fascist forces before any are believed to have been completed. My video of Fokker D21 ends here. Thank you for watching. If you find this video interesting, please give me your thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to support the channel. Goodbye and see you again in the next videos.